This is a full teardown of the Yesu FT2DR. I've sped up some of the sections that are little things like taking screws off and stuff uh, to make it easier to, to roll through it all. So you see quickly took off the antenna and knobs there. I have this little tray that I use good for holding uh, watch making parts or any small screws or, or anything like that. I'm just taking off the battery, trying to get everything centered here so we can keep track of stuff in frame. I adjusted where I put my camera, so details. Um, getting some screwdrivers and everything, what I'm going to need now to, to get it all apart. On the back here, you see there's two screws at the bottom there. Um, when I take those two screws out, one of the screw holes in there is actually threaded at a larger size, and you can use a screw screw it into the metal case itself as opposed to through it like how this is and use it to pull out the back part i'm looking now trying to figure it out and what i do is i push on the buttons on the front and pushing on those buttons allows me to get the bottom out a bit so that i can lift it and pull it out the pcc there on the side i just took out the sd card that's important to do before you start pulling it out because what you will do is destroy the SD card slot. Uh, there's another uh, person I saw that made a video on here that I think didn't quite catch theirs uh, as soon as I caught mine. I had I was fortunate enough to watch his video so uh, I knew what was about to happen. And so right here I, I did kind of tweak it a little bit so I powered up the radio just to make sure that that slot was uh, still working and I, I didn't just create some repair work for myself. So I'm uh, kind of looking at that, uh, seeing what the plan of attack is. There's three screws that are at the white area where those buttons are that I'm going to work on taking out now. Uh, that was more than a little bit of a challenge. Uh, a hell of a lot tougher than I would have thought it was. And it's because I think the screws um, somehow galvanically bonded themselves to the copper plating below the gold. So to get them to break free, um, I noticed the plating. If you look at the zoomed in pictures on richesum.com, um, where all the detailed photos of this are posted, I'll have a link in the description. You'll see how the, the part on the, the PC board where those screws contacted, the gold plating's missing, and it looks like the screw somehow bonded to the, the copper below it. So it was incredibly hard to get it out. Two of the screws uh, I thoroughly, thoroughly stripped. Um, but for putting it back together, I just kind of uh, turned them into flatheads, you could say, by uh, pressing a flathead screwdriver in there uh, pretty hard. So I was able to get the screws back in. But that was unfortunate. I was hoping this would come, a, come apart simpler than this. I've owned this radio for a couple years, uh, at least a year minimum, and it's never experienced any kind of, uh, you know, bad temperatures or anything, so I'm not sure, or humidity, so I'm not sure why that happened. Um, although I do live in Texas, so perhaps humidity is relative. Um, right here, this little cable that I'm, I'm going to take out, there's a little white piece that flips up. Um, I just ended up pulling on the cable. It's just a pressure fit, and so the cable pulls right out, and that's for the, the volume knob and the channel selector. Um, so now we have the front board off which is kind of the main processing board and what I'm looking at now is this black piece on the back this black plastic part I was trying to remove it but I decided there was nothing underneath it so it's not worthwhile just took off the little uh, gasket here um, and then right here on the front um, we're gonna take off the LCD screen uh, that's sitting uh, sitting on top there so it's just four, uh, four screws. There are a couple ribbon connections, and I would caution you, if you take this off, you'll notice how I can only lift it up so far. It's because the little um, clear plastic parts that kind of go over the top of the board there, uh, the ribbon cable isn't quite long enough to get those away and to easily flip the screen back 180. So uh, here to take it off is kind of like a little bit of a pain. Right, because you have to reach in there with a the screwdriver. You have to flip up um, the little uh, right here, the little uh, kind of uh, tabs that they keep the to put the pressure on these ribbon cables. Now to put it back together, you know, 
what I wasn't thinking at the time is, guess what? I got to put it back in this same weird little configuration, but press those cables in somehow and then flip those things down. So there's nothing underneath the screen here. It's just the, the backlight and, and that uh, kind of big white sticker you saw there. So um, other than for teardown purposes here or unless you have to replace a screen, uh, you know, not sure it's worth the effort. Um, here there's a, a bunch of screws and some standoffs that are holding this board um, onto the metal chassis. Um, you notice uh, very quickly what I noticed is compared to the Kenwood that I took apart that you can see on the website, uh, the THD74, there's just a lot fewer kind of sub-assemblies and pieces to this radio. Um, and also how they connected the antenna, the SMA, to the circuit board here is really nice with a little screw. On the Kenwood, they soldered it, so to actually remove the board, it's a, a bit more of a pain. So, you know, I, I'd say the, the, the ASU is probably more enjoyable to work on and, uh, and take apart, and I can understand why it's lower cost as well. Um, when putting this back together, that little rubber seal you see around the power connectors you'd have to do a little bit of finagling to get it to go through that hole. You can't just press it really hard. I mean, I guess you could, but you'd risk messing up the board. So you do have to use like a little spudger to kind of go around and help the lip through. Um, just taking off kind of the final, uh, the final parts here um, just to get everything out. I took out this little selector knob. The only piece I didn't take off the chassis was that SMA connector um, because I was worried that unless I put it back perfectly, the little uh, part where the antenna screws down to the circuit board, maybe that would be off by a little bit. I might put some undue pressure on things, so I didn't see any value in trying to take that out and put it all back together um, just to take the connector out, um, considering mine isn't broken. If you had to take it out, I think you probably grip it with some pliers um, to get it out of there. So this is all the pieces on the wiki. You will see uh, the full, high-detailed, high-resolution photos of all of this. Um, so you can check it out. You can compare it against the other radios. You'll also notice I have an FT3DR on there. There'll be another video that shows the teardown of that. Um, so I look forward to seeing you over there on the, the wiki. And feel free to create an account and add in uh, any photos or details of your own. Thanks.